Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, uh, I'm taking you to the town of Dudley. It's in the West Midlands of England, and there, my dudes, there was a guy who was obsessed. And when I say obsessed, I mean like, fanatic. About horror movies. My kind of guy. I haven't told you the rest yet. They were his bread and his butter. Mad about him. So he was. You know, when he should have been obsessed with, um, you know, being a, a normal person. Because horror movie became horror life. For him, his boyfriend, and a woman named Julia Rawson. So you know what that means. Yeah, that's right. They all became best friends. If this wasn't reality. And as he was chilling on the street one day, a couple of cops went up to him and they asked, you know, do you know anything about a, maybe a missing person? Um, and he, and he clues, but you know, don't, don't think too hard. You might faint. He had the greatest Whoa. face I've ever seen. What? Little old me. Well, okay, he didn't say little old me. Look at him. Before I get into it, please subscribe to see new crime videos every week. But you know, I'm not your boss. Uh, so now let's, you know, get into it. And by that I mean, let's give it a go. So Dudley, wow. You know, I, I hear you're barking, big dog. What a place. Well, one fella on Reddit said it's not bad at all, just a bit crap. It's the third most dangerous town in the uh, West Midlands, so do it that what you will. And a little over 300,000 people live in the Dudley Borough. It's where the Industrial Revolution, you know, kicked off, so uh, cheers for that one. Um, but now it still has lots of other industries to keep it tick tick ticking over. Also it has a big old statue of Pegasus uh, for some reason, which, I don't know, it's kind of funny looking. Maybe it's the eyes. <laughs> you know what I mean? I always associate towns right smack dab in the middle of England with Greek mythology. And uh, going by previous cases set in England that I've covered, I also associate them with murder, dun dun. So let's meet Julia Rawson. In 2019, Julia, or Jew as she sometimes went by, was 42 years of age, but looking into this, consistently described as a big kid, a larger than life character. She would say a happy child is a mucky child, and that was a mantra she kept, you know, throughout her own life. She had studied at Stafford Art College. Stafford um, is actually her own home, her own hometown. It's about an hour north uh, of Dudley, and you know, people would say that whenever he popped over, she probably had paint on her face. Artistic, eccentric, and exciting. In fact, it was in college that Julia met Elaine, who would remain her lifelong girlfriend and partner, and they were inseparable. She lived in Dudley with her girlfriend Elaine, and it was tut pub and painting, you know, uh, Julia had little art uh, exhibitions, and previously they had ran a stall together in Birmingham, sorry, Birmingham, but now they had moved their little stall to the big smoke of Dudley. And in that little stall they, they were running together, they would sell uh, incense, you know, that kind of, all that kind of smelly thingies, candles, crystals, pagan statues and artifacts, pretty interesting stuff. If you're into that sort of thing, uh, Dudley is haunted as shit, by the way. They have ghosts up the wazoo. In fact, Julia and Elaine, who, you know, they were kind of lifelong partners together, they had their little, you know, we were on a break, but you know, they, they had gotten back together and uh, they had just opened their first brick and mortar, uh, a store called Phoenix, where they would be selling that kind of pagan stuff and incense and all that. Um, they had just opened it when, here comes the fall, Julia vanished in May 2019. Julia Rawson, uh, she was reported missing on the 14th of May 2019. You know, just as summer is kicking into gear and the good times about to get good, they got bad. In fact, by the day she was reported missing, she had been missing for three days. 
at this point. See, Julia Upton vanished, and you would notice, a lot of people did, like Julia, she was a real familiar face around the town of Dudley, a lot of people would give her, you know, how are you? Uh, and she would have no problem, you know, chatting away to anyone and everyone, and Elaine hadn't heard from her for, for days, uh, by day, for days by this point, and if Julia did go somewhere, you know, she wouldn't leave Elaine in the lurch. So the police opened up a missing persons report in downtown Dudley, and of course, you know, here we begin. Well, where was she last seen? What had she been up to on the day she was last seen? Well, that was the 11th uh, of May. It was a Saturday. Um, she had been hanging out with Elaine all day, you know, they had been faffing about, they had been doing a bit of shopping, they had been going, you know, around for, for a few scoops. Uh, they had been in Wolverhampton, which is a uh, city nearby, for a good portion of the day. Elaine then, you know, she was tired and she wanted to go home, but Julia, you know, Saturday night, she was still, still up for it. So she uh, was planning on getting the bus into Birmingham. Now, Julia ended up getting the wrong bus. She ended up getting a bus, in fact, back back home by accident back to Dudley. And so she was like, well, I'm supposed to go into the big hammy to meet friends, but, you know, couldn't be arsed now, may as well make the most of it. Have a sneaky pint, you know, back in in their local, which was a pub called Bottle and Cork. It was in like a Dudley town centre just off, uh, just off High Street. So it appears, you know, she, had, she was going to go there as a chill spot, have a few sups on the way home. But she never made it home. Now tracing all of this, it didn't take the police long at all to track Julia to where she had gone that particular night. And CCTV proved it. She'd gone in alone and had a drink or two. And then, something which caught the eye uh, of, the, of the investigators. At around 8 minutes to 11 p.m., she walked to the bar and started talking to someone. A man, face hidden behind a light. And it appeared this man, he, he was alone himself, like Julia had been. But Julia had been kind of wandering around, chatting to anyone and everyone. Uh, Julia was like that. And so Julia went up to talk. She probably saw this guy sitting by himself. Sure, you know, head up, keep him company, you know yourself. That guy, though, was a uh, complete psycho who was obsessed with sexual abuse, uh, necrophilia, cannibalism, all the hits, all the good ones, all the, you know, um, kind of beating around the bush here, sick shit. He had a long history of physical and mental health problems, and he was not too peachy keen on, you know, dealing with the more kind of you know, looking for a, to remedy them. Nah, wasn't for him. Not at all. He was mad into it. He loved being a big, dirty bastard to everyone around him. We'll get to that. that okay, that, don't worry. That's on the, the to-do list of this video. So they chatted away. They talked about his tattoos. They talked about music and art. He didn't go into too much detail about his, uh, you know, favorite art, though. Bottle and cork. Bit of a metal bar kind of alternative. So, you know, People who go there would, would kind of have stuff in common. Julia and Elaine, they spoke, they last spoke to each other around 11 p.m., which is more or less, judging by the CCTV, right after Julia started talking to this lad. After that, Elaine, she went to bed and obviously she would wake up the next morning with no word from, from Julia. But what they could piece together happened is that last orders in Bottle and Cork were at 1 a.m. So uh, it appears this guy and you, they were like, well, here, listen, night's still young. You know, you want to head back for a few bottles or something. Uh, and they got a taxi back to his place. He lived on a kind of a small estate uh, on a place called Mission Drive. He had a flat there. It was in a place called Tipton. Uh, it's like basically part of Dudley. It's all kind of like his right side. So they got a taxi to his flat, it was right beside a canal. And it was a flat of uh, horrors. Not what Julia would have been expecting at all. And he wasn't alone. From then on, there were no texts, uh, no calls from Julia. 
So now the police, they had this footage, and they showed it around, but no one recognized who this fella was. None of her friends knew, and none of the other people who were at the bar that night knew of him. He, it, it seemed like it, it may not have been his regular. But he rolled up his sleeves and he showed his tattoos on, on camera, and they you know, they were fairly distinctive. And so images of that were kind of passed around. Anyone know a guy with tattoos like this? Julia Rawson was reported missing on the 14th of May 2019. Uh, she was reported missing by a friend having last been seen on the uh, Saturday um, late afternoon. Um, following um, her report of missing to West Midlands Police, uh, a missing person inquiry uh, commenced. And so it was uh, on the 22nd of May, which is 11 days uh, after Julia disappeared, that, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Uh, someone who had seen that flyer was like, I know who that is. He's over there. Uh, you call the cops, pointed him out, and he... What's the name of that? Julia Rawson. Who? Hey. Julia. Julia? Julia Wilson. Rawson. Rawson. Do you know anyone about that name? The only women I know, I'm just my family or his family, I know. Right. This is my partner. Okay. Hey, what's the name of that? Julia the police had a few questions uh, for the lad and he denied it was him in that footage and the man standing beside him it was his boyfriend a guy named David Leasley he would also talk to the police and say no -uh, that's not him in the footage that's clear clearly someone else you know what I mean David would say, no, we were we were in bed that night. Um, you know, he didn't go out and, you know, I'll sign a, um, a signy thingy to that effect. They, in fact, arrested him then and there. His name was Nathan Maynard Ellis, and his partner, Greasy David Leasley, standing beside him there, was also arrested. Yeah, I know. You can smell him shitting himself from here. His level of uh, obsessiveness, messed upness, wasn't wasn't known to the police at all. Like previously, they had no interactions with him ever before. Um, so they didn't have a clue who this guy was or what his deal was. They'd find out pretty quickly. Now, when questioned back at the station, he said, "Nope, don't know what it's not me. It's not me. Are you blind? It's not me." Though David would later say he would change the old story, the old scale, and he would say, okay, listen, um, maybe he wasn't home. I went to bed early, so he could have gone out. But you know, if someone did go missing, his partner Nathan was, no sorry, Bob, was not involved, not at all. And if you go to our apartment and you see carpet that's just been ripped up, that's totally innocent also, okay? Once Nathan Maynard Ellis's arrest was publicized, a woman would also come forward with her own experiences of this guy. In 2007, so 12 years earlier, Nathan had been in a relationship with a woman known as C.W. Her name has never been released. She was pretty vulnerable uh, at the time. She was two years younger then our boy Nathan and she quickly learned of his obsession with horror, with gore and how um, violent and controlling he could be. And he could be that all the time. What a mix for a shithead pie. She would say he always would regularly go for these big old walks with like a black hood, a rope and a knife in case he found someone to kill. Now luckily, um, he didn't that we know of. He had sexually assaulted her multiple times, many times at gunpoint, and had threatened to kill her on more than one occasion too. Now, after a while, she managed to escape. Then, uh, Nathan out here, he came out as gay, and he started seeing uh, David Leasley, who was five years younger than himself, and by the time of the uh, arrest, they had been together for about nine years. Now, Nathan had gone to college, and he had studied film, uh, and theater, theater, and he was mad, mad into uh, like masks, props, all that kind of stuff. Now, some of them are gonna be pretty badass, but as you can imagine, Nathan, um, he would just make scary masks and probably have sex with them. As I said, Nathan was just absolutely obsessed with like gruesome shit and murder. He was the guy who'd probably go on rotten.com every day and say, hey, wouldn't mind having a piece of that action if you know what I'm saying. He was once, in fact, 
a, a juror on a murder trial, which I'm sure he greatly enjoyed and probably had a big old boner the entire time. Now, um, as far as I've been able to find doing the L research, well, nothing about David Leasley. I couldn't really tell much about him, how into this whole stuff he was. Like, obviously, you're very aware of Nathan's obsession, but I don't know if he was into it or was he was just going along with it. But he was definitely under Nathan's thumb. I, I can't say he had no previous convictions, so, so Shine. Uh, he met Nathan on a dating app. Um, he was 16 years old at the time. He was pretending to be 18. And Nathan was uh, 21. He's five years older. Um, so, yeah, it seems like Nathan kind of the controlling and violent Nathan, you know, uh, David was probably pretty easy for him to have as his little troll. He did work at the co-op, which, um, as far as I, it's a supermarket, I believe. So this was the home the police saw after the arrest, full of L shite. Uh, to be honest though, there's, there's some kind of cool stuff there, some bangers in that collection. There were stuffed animals, like nailed creepily to the walls with eyes. Missing all sorts of like gross shit around the place. They had snakes and lizards. Not gross at all, but you know, the implication. DVDs about necrophilia, beheading, all of that. Some whack though. Uh, some smell. I can, I can, I can get it from here. And the police certainly got something when they saw the carpet had been recently changed. They pulled it up and they saw blood stains underneath. See, Julia was very drunk. Nathan was not at all when they left Botland Cork and they got a taxi at around 2 a.m. Then, at some point in that flat of horrors, uh, when they arrived, I'm sure Julia got quite a shock upon entering. And then Nathan took her home. David came out. She probably was not expecting another person to be there. And then they brutally murdered her. She was bashed over the head with a rolling pin. Um, and then she was chopped up with a saw into 12 different pieces. Her kidney was also removed. No one knows why or what they did with it. The next day, they took the clothes, the bloody clothes, and they burnt them uh, at an incinerator. And then after her dismembered body was in that flat for two days, they finally took her out, you know, wrapped her in these bags and dumped her uh, along the canal. On the 16th of May, the beefcakes over here, they took the carpet and the blood-stained sofa and dumped them. When those were recovered, her DNA and blood was all over them. No one who knew old Nate and Dave over here said they were acting strangely, oddly, in the days after. In fact, the next day, well, the 12th of May, so it would have been the same day he murdered Julia, he was out at the pub again, having a grand ale time. So things were great for Nathan and David until this moment, when Shrek shits his pants. What's the name of her? Julia Rawson. Hey. Julia. Julia? Julia Wilson. Rawson. Rawson. Do you know anyone by that name? The only women I know, I'm just my family or his family, I know. Right. This is my partner. Okay. Julia would be found after extensive searches of the canal and the surrounding woodland area. The body had been wrapped tightly in black plastic, so it it was it was pretty well preserved. So Nathan initially pled not guilty, said he didn't know he wasn't involved, and David did too. Um, one year after that, um, Nathan came out and said. Okay, maybe I did do it though, so. So he admitted he murdered Julia, but with a big asterisk. He said that he invited her home, you know, just for a few drinks very innocently. And she started hitting on him, you know, feeling him up. And that just made him very angry. So he responded in the very normal way of going into the kitchen, getting a rolling pin and brutally bashing her over the head. And then he said voices, those tricksy voices at it again. They told him to you know, murder her and um, chop her up. He was also diagnosed as being uh, on the autism spectrum and with chronic depressive disorder, so his defense really, you know, they tried to make use of, use of that as well. The trial, it began in October 2020, so about a year and a half 
After the murder, during the trial, Nathan would take the stand. Um, David wouldn't. The charges of, of the the woman, yes, CW, though Nathan also had those charges uh, against him to answer for too. Um, the trial would go on for a month, at the end of which they would both be found guilty. They were both sentenced to life in prison. A minimum of 30 years for Nathan, minimum of 19 years for David. So following a lengthy trial at Coventry Crown Court, two men have been jailed for their part in the killing of Julia. This was a complex investigation that involved an extensive search of an area to locate Julia's body. Uh, the sole aim of the investigation to seek justice for Julia. I hope that the result today provides some solace for Julia's family. I know that they are still grieving for her loss, but hopefully as a family unit they can move forward. It seems Nathan, though, you know, quite rather obsessed with, with doing it and very much wanting to do it and would have done what he did at some point. He didn't actually set out that night, though, with the intent to find someone to kill. He just, you know, got lucky, for want of a better word, and ran into Julia, a Julia who would, you know, was really nice and would have no problem talking away and hanging out with anyone. She was this extremely gregarious, friendly person who fell victim to this you know, sack of shit. What happened that night, uh, really, it's still unknown, probably never will be known. David, he never said. And all that comes out of Nathan is bullshit. So here, you know, we have once again more stories of folk obsessed with serial killers and all that, and then uh, joining them, or, or really attempting to. God damn, as someone who looks at this all day, every day, you know, making videos, it's pretty odd. Um, to want to, to join them, but you know, these people are not exactly normal. Not for me. Gotta say, I would rather just sit here and make <clears throat> dick jokes about them. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate you doing so, taking the time to be here with Misha, sitting here, uh, talking away. So, yeah, uh, here, listen, I'll see you as always real soon in the next old video, but until then, you know yourself. Uh, please take care of each other and most of all yourselves because I love you. Mike out.